We're going to be talking about square roots today. And another word for square roots are radicals. Um, we learn more about radicals in grade 10, and then we really get into it in grade 11 and 12. So I feel that grade nine is a nice introduction to square roots. And like I said, square roots are something you guys have all seen before. Uh, let's actually just go to the side and discuss what a square root in, in, is and when you've seen it before. So in the past, you may have seen a question like this, the square root of 36. Shailen? Oh dear, uh, come on down. So whenever you saw the square root of a number, what, what you were really being asked is, what two identical numbers multiply to give you the number inside that little square root sign? And so in this case, what are two numbers that multiply to give you 36? Yep. Yeah, good. So we know the answer to this is going to be six. However, there's actually another answer. Does anyone know what the other answer to this question is? Positive six is correct, but there's actually something else. Yeah. Yeah, negative six. The answer to this would actually be positive or negative six. Why? Because positive six times positive six equals 36, but also negative six times negative six equals 36. So whenever you take the square root of a number, you're actually gonna be considering the plus and the minus. Now, I'm gonna tell you that this is true, this is the case. And when we do question number one, we are gonna consider both the positive and negative. However, when we start doing our calculations, it gets too complicated to look at the negative answers. So for question number two, we're only gonna be looking at the positive answers of the square roots. But you should know that the answers are plus or minus. So let's try, start uh, very straightforward with question number one. And by the way, if you have your uh, that, that chart that I was just telling you about, these questions are very, very straightforward because you're just looking at them and, and trying to find it on the chart. What do you think is, and we could just say it out loud, you don't have to volunteer, just to say it. What is the square root of 49? Yep, and remember, we're gonna write plus or minus seven. What is the square root of 81? Plus or minus nine. What is the square root of 121? Good, plus or minus 11. Square root of 400? Plus or minus 20. Square root of 625, plus or minus 25. All right, now how do we do a question with a fraction? Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the square root of each of the numerator and denominator separately. So you could actually rewrite this. So it is root nine over square root 16. And this time, can I get a volunteer to tell me what the answer would be, uh, Peyton? Three over four is correct. Okay, how about the next one? And um, you don't have to rewrite it uh, as a, like splitting them up. If you can just consider it to be root 169 and root 100, yep. 13 over 10, 13 over 10 good. And a volunteer to tell me the answer for question H, Sharia? eight over 30. And like I told you, because your chart only goes up to 30, I'm gonna make sure to stick to numbers that go up to 30, but also sometimes you can get numbers that are multiples of something and um, see what happens there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at question number two. For question number two, we're now looking at square roots, but there's a little bit more to it. It's not just a regular square root by itself. So every single question is gonna be done slightly differently. I'm gonna explain how to do each one. We're gonna work on it together. So let's take a look at question number two. I'm gonna tell you something you are not allowed to do. If you have a question like this, you are not allowed to break it up into two different square roots. And the reason is a square root is very much like a bracket. So anything under a square root sign, you kind of have to consider it all together. So instead of breaking it up, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add the numbers under the square root sign and see what we get. So what is 16 plus nine? Good. And like I said, for these questions, we're only gonna look at the positive values. The square root of 25 would be? 
just a five, and that would be our final answer. Question? Yeah, because I said, uh, it, we, it just makes it too complicated. So we're only going to look at the positive numbers. Okay, what is 4 plus 9 plus 36? What was that? 49. 49, good. And then what's the square root of 49? 7. I hear that my squares work sometimes, and then sometimes they don't work at all. Why are you not working? Let me try it one more time. That works. For question C, um, you know, it's already split up, so we don't actually have to add them together or anything. We just need to look at them separately. The square root of 64 is? Square root of 49 is? 8 take away 7 is? I know you meant one, and that's right. Okay, question D. When I see a square root sign under another square root sign, that's like square root inception. I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie, but it's when you have multiple different layers and you kind of have to work from the inside and then go all the way to the outside. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to start on the innermost part and we're going to try to solve that. Panujan, question? Yep. Yeah. In this, I'm glad you saw that. So we're going to begin with uh, solving the square root of 25, which is going to be 5 plus 11. And then we know 5 plus 11 is 16. And that answer is going to give us a final answer of just 4. There are more of these questions with square roots inside more square roots. So let's try and solve them. Uh, question E, again, you look at the innermost square root, which is this one right here, and you start by solving that. So we're going to begin by writing 6, take away, what is the square root of 4? Good. So the square root of 4 is 2, 6 take away 2. What's 6 take away 2 going to give us? Just a 4, and what's the square root of 4? 2, and that would be our final answer. Abisha, you had a question? Yes, they are. F and G are the same. I know I always say I'm going to change one of them and I never get around to doing it. Okay, for question F and G, which are the same, there's nothing tricky. It's just every single square root has to be done differently. Do you want to try that, Rodwan? Yep. Yeah, okay, so what's the square root of 25? Yep. Now, this is what you were saying. When you have a big number in front of a square root sign, what that means is that number is going to be multiplied to whatever you get in the square root. So this next part is actually going to be two times the square root of nine, which is a three. Rodwan, do you want to do the next one as well? What would that one be? Oh, that's fine. Three and the square root of 16 would be Yoda? Good, so it's gonna be five plus two times three minus three times four. Again, keep in mind that these numbers are multiplied together. So when you have a whole number in front of a radical, you're gonna multiply them together. We're gonna to just continue solving this. This is more just, you know, integer algebra work. Uh, sorry, just integer work. So two times three is six. Negative three times four is negative 12. It'll be 11 minus 12, which is gonna be negative one. Okay, let's keep going. Um, we're gonna skip question G because it's the same. Can I get a volunteer to do question H? Emily, go ahead. Good. Negative 33. And the reason we got that is because it has the same sign. So you're gonna add the numbers and you're gonna keep the sign. Uh, 
question I. Now question I and J are really interesting because we're gonna do them and then I'm gonna show you a very, um, very nice trick that'll always help you solve questions like this. So let's pretend like we didn't know the trick. We're just solving this. Uh, what is the square root of 49? Seven. And remember, according to bed mass, you got to solve what's inside the bracket. So I'm going to take the square root of 70, 49, which is seven, and it's going to be seven squared. What's seven squared? 49. All right. Keep that in mind when we try the next question. And then we're going to come up with a general rule that will always help us when we're trying questions like this. Uh, let's try question number J or letter J. What is the square root of 100? Good. And what is 10 squared? 100. Can anyone see the pattern when you're doing questions like this? Yeah, so the, the rule is whenever you have, and we'll make a general rule and just write it at the bottom over here. Whenever you have a number, let's just call it X, it's square rooted and it's squared. What happens is those two operations actually cancel each other out. When you square root something and then you square it, it cancels it out. And the thing that you're left with is just the number inside, which is the X or the 49 or the 100. So I could give you a very random number like the square root of 500, 582, all of it squared. Even though you don't know the square root of 582, you do know that if you have a square root and a square, they cancel each other out and you're gonna be left with just 582. Does that make sense? Okay, we're actually going to avoid decimal questions. So we're gonna skip the next two. We're not gonna do K or L. We're gonna get into our last question um, on the sheet. So for this question, number three, it says between which two integers? Remember, integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So negative one, negative two, positive one, positive two, positive three is the approximate value of square uh, root 35. Now we don't have calculators. If we had calculators, we just put them into our calculator, root 35, we get a decimal answer, and then that would be really straightforward. How do we solve this question without actually having a calculator and knowing what the value of root 35 is? Nayara? Exactly, we're gonna find the nearest square root. And so how are we gonna do that? Well, if you take a look at the little timeline or the little number line that I have written at the bottom of the page, what I'm gonna do is at the bottom of every single one of these, um, these numbers, I'm just gonna put what the, square, what, what the square root would be. So I'm just trying to get a nice color. Let's get blue. So um, the way that you get negative one would be negative just square root one. The way that you get one is root one. The way that you get two is root four. Three is root nine. Four is root 16. Five is root 25. Six is root 36. Seven is root 49. Okay, because I know when I take the square root of all those numbers, it gives me those positive values over there. So once I make a number line and I figure out how I'm getting these whole numbers, I just need to see what is root 35 between? What two numbers is root 35 between? Nayara? Yeah, it's going to be between root 25 and root 36. You're going to find it somewhere between there. And so that means when you put plug in root 35 in a calculator, it's going to land somewhere between five and six. It'll probably be like five point something. So if you get a question like this on an assessment, this is the strategy you're gonna use to solve it. And I think you have a couple of questions on your homework. So that's the end of this lesson. We're still gonna do Pythagorean theorem, but let me just tell you your homework for this. You're gonna be completing handout E, um, but I've actually crossed out all of the, the values with decimals. So if you want, I mean, you could, you could do them for a challenge. Um, actually, I wonder if, you know what, maybe this this time, because we, when I crossed these out, it was more for like pandemic math. Maybe this time you can do all of them and try them. The only one you don't have to do is question six, because that we will learn at a later time.
Okay, but all of questions one, two, three, and four, and five, you are gonna try for homework. 